We are here with someone from Tyrion. Can you please introduce yourself? My name is Christopher Johnson. I play the guitar. Okay. And also founder of Tyrion. Yes. Beloved Antichrist uh, finally came out last week. Um, how would you describe the album? Is it a rock opera, metal opera? Is it a musical? Is it a concept album? Well, it's not an album. Uh, if I say Jesus Christ Superstar, you wouldn't refer to it as an album. Uh, it's a rock metal musical with opera vocals. Um, but I'm open to, to perform it live with, with rock vocals or anything. You know, it's not carved in stone. Um, the only odd thing is that we're releasing the audio version first instead of staging it first, which is because of economic reasons. You got the idea, uh, or you started working on it almost 15 years ago, if I'm not mistaken. What were the biggest obstacles to finally making the entire album? Well, yes and no. Um, I actually started to work on a classical opera 15 years ago, or uh, yeah, something like that. Um, I don't even remember what year it was, 2001, 2003, some, something like that. Um, but I didn't manage to uh, complete the, the classical opera because I can't write um, music with uh, recitatives. Uh, a recitative is um, a mixture between talking and singing, which you use to move on faster in the story. If you're going to sing everything with nice melodies, it takes a very long time to tell the story. And um, I guess I'm a bit damaged by rock music in my way of thinking. I need things to be somewhat interesting most of the time. And I cannot write what people usually refer to as the boring part in the operas. I can write the highlights. So I get stuck and I didn't write a single note for many, many years. And in 2012, I just asked myself what to do about it. Uh, because I had written some nice music but obviously it wasn't going anywhere. And I asked myself, why do I want to make a classical opera? And I didn't have any good answer for that, so I just thought, okay, it was just an idea, it didn't work, so what should I do? And I thought, maybe I should just theorize the music, like re rearrange the music to fit theory. Um, and while elaborating with that thought, I thought maybe it's a good idea also to keep the whole concept of uh, a theatrical stage performance, but in a Therian way. Um, and the original opera was supposed to be rather short, like one hour plus something, one hour, 20 minutes maybe, in two acts. Um, but now when I I've started to write it in a Therian way, exactly that happened, uh, That, which is why you need the recitatives, you know. Um, uh, the uh, recitatives. Um, we wrote an opera that was four hours long. <laughs> That's what happens when you, you sing everything with melodies. And um, we just had to shorten it down. We couldn't record four hours. So we, we shortened it down to three and a half hour, which yeah. we 46 songs of, of pieces. No, over 50. We recorded, yeah. over, I think, 51 scenes. And then some of the scenes were much longer also. So we, we recorded that. And then I, when I listened to the recording, I thought, this is still too long, we can't release three and a half hour. So we cut down to 46 scenes and we shortened down some scenes also, um, especially one scene, um, to get what we have now on this, this release. So uh, effectively, we started to, to work on new material in 2013. Now we have the three acts, the, the three CDs, is it your hope that fans will listen through the three CDs or the three acts at once? Or? It's natural that you do it in the beginning, but I don't think people do that all the time. And I don't really understand when some people say, oh, it's too long. I mean, there's no sticker on the CD that says, if you don't listen to all three CDs all at once, we will come and kick your ass. You know, it's, you can treat it as three different CDs. When, when we released Lemuria and Cyrus B, they were released together in a special deal, so you would get both albums. Um, and later they were split, and now people see it as two different uh, releases, even though they were recorded at the same time. 
So I, I really don't understand this whole obsession because everybody asks about that, uh, about the length and that it all has to be at once. It just doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. Beloved Antichrist is inspar inspired or based uh, partially on a Russian novel, but you you changed some of the material, like the roles of the females. And can you elaborate a bit on, on that? We changed pretty much everything. I mean, we owe our story totally to Solovyev, who wrote the original, because without his story, there wouldn't be our story. So you can say we, we preserved the skeleton of it, you know, the many of the characters and the overall uh, concept. But we totally changed the beginning, we totally changed the end. We introduced a lot of new characters, females, because there were no male characters. Uh, there were only male characters in the book. And we changed the gender of one of the characters and expanded uh, this from being a small role to a main role. And once you take out the big knife and start cutting in the story, there's no end to it. So we changed a lot, bit by bit. And I would say there are maybe three, four scenes that are pretty much how it is in, in the book. And you can see where the story comes from. But if you only read the book and you would see the, the theatrical stage performance, it would be totally different. There are about 30 roles, if I'm not mistaken. Um, how did you actually record it? Because part of the album was recorded in Sweden, some parts were recorded in Russia, if I'm not mistaken. The choir was recorded in, in, uh, in Moscow. Um, my studio is too small for recording big ensembles, so it works fine for, for drums and individual vocalists, guitars and all that, but um, I, I can record a small choir in my studio also. I did that for Citrara, but I wanted a, a, a bigger choir this time. Vocals, well there were 29 roles, but they're performed by 15 people. Um, it's quite common in opera that if you have a, a vocal character which is a very small role in one act and you have a similar vocal character in another act you let the same singer do it like there's a soldier who sings a few lines in act three a tenor then if you have a another tenor the, a small tenor role in, in the other act why take two different guys get all dressed up and you know go on stage and sing for 20 seconds mm -hmm. so then you rather have one guy doing two or three roles and just change makeup and clothes and wigs or whatever they need to do in, in between <laughs> started the tour like two weeks ago uh, how has it been so far I guess it's uh, quite uh, a heavy schedule that you have you play in 25 countries over a period of over 66 days how do you keep up with a grueling schedule like that that's just the beginning then we go home and wash the socks and the underwear and then we go to Latin America for another 20 shows <coughs> so uh, yeah I think we're like 85 shows although we do also Israel and we do um, Russia, Ukraine, after this. Um, the beginning of the tour was awesome, and then we went to England, which was less awesome. Um, somebody had the idea of booking eight shows for us in the UK, and that's the weakest market for us in Europe. So that's a bit weird. So London is, of course, great. Manchester is not so bad. Um, the rest. You know, we play quite small places and very small crowds, and I mean, that's okay. You know, we can do a small show once in a while, but the whole tour with ice cold backstage room, no catering, and then our bus, <laughs> which was a crap bus to start with, uh, caught fire. Wow. Um, so we had to like evacuate it on the highway in the middle of the winter, just run out of the bus. And then we had a replacement bus, which was literally the worst not only the worst bus I've ever seen no it, not only the worst bus I've, I've had it's the yeah. worst bus I've ever seen <laughs> it it rained inside of it it had no heating wow. in the middle of the winter 
and there were bugs in it, and uh, there were um, uh, it was mold. You know? I mean, it's, that bus should be buried or driven down to the, <laughs> the bottom Cliff, of a yeah. lake or something. Put on fire. Yeah, it, it's the worst wreck I've ever seen. Uh, so that made the UK dates very hard because if you have a tiny, tiny backstage, it's not enough for for even one band, and you have only cold showers and you have no catering you get like 10 pounds which is your ridiculous yeah that's gonna be your breakfast lunch dinner everything then if you have a bus then at least you can you know store some food and stuff mm -hmm. there and you have a nice place to go and you can get changed there instead so when the bus is even worse than the backstage it really wears on you so normally Nobody have anything against Belgium, but Belgium is also a country that doesn't have any strong characteristics. It's right. like Belgium, French, right? If it's Tuesday, you know. it must be Belgium. Yeah. When, when I was like, I've never longed in my entire life so much <laughs> to get to Belgium. Like, wow, what a nice venue! People are, you know, we have proper uh, food backstage and in Belgium beer. Belgium. Oh, we don't really drink on tour, believe it or not. Um, some of the guys may take one yeah. or maximum two beers per yeah. day, but. Uh, I mean, now that we don't drink anything at all. Uh, oh, oh but no. I, I do like the wit beer though, so oh. um, maybe I'll grab a Hugo and save for, for the last day. And after the last show, I'll drink some beers. Yeah. Uh, how do you decide on set list for a tour like this? Uh, if I'm not mistaken, the previous gigs you played like 20 songs, uh, five songs from the last album. How do you decide? Since the album was delayed, we had pretty much no choice but playing those four songs that were um, s digital singles, so they were pre-listened. So um, the fans coming to the first nine shows, they they would know four of the new songs at least. And then we took "My Voyage Carries On" because it's very fun to play and it's an up-tempo guitar-driven song. And I think when we release a rock musical, which is very classical and not so heavy compared to what we normally do. It feels natural to play the heavier songs live because that's what, what the fans want. You know, those who doesn't want a rock musical, who just want a regular new album, they will probably prefer these songs. And when you play live, you have to give the audience what they want. You know? When you make a record, you do what you want. But live, it's a cooperation. Yeah. And the whole set we, we did actually, I, I think we haven't had a more brutal set than this since we were a death metal band back in the days. Mm -hmm. 